Hi everyone. Today we're gonna teach you how to make homemade putty. It's a super simple activity and helps strengthen those muscles in your kids' hands, getting them ready for writing. Lotion Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Corn starts is a little bit uh, fluffy, so. I'm on dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Cornstarch, scented or unscented lotion, food coloring, measuring cups, mixing bowls, essential oils, flavor extracts, or scented lotion, mixing spoons, placemats. Okay guys, ready to get started? Yeah! All right, today we're gonna show you how to make homemade putty. It's super simple. All you'll need is a cup of cornstarch. Rachel, why don't you take the cornstarch and dump it in there. Okay. There you go about three to four ounces of lotion. You can use scented or unscented, totally up to you. Ugh, and then hold it to the side and she might be able to scoop some out with that. There you go. Scoop it out. Next, you're gonna mix it really well together. Can I mix it? Yep, go ahead and mix can it. Can I use a spoon? Yep. Do we need a little more lotion? Yeah, maybe. I think so. It's not Here, Benjamin. School. There, <laughs> some of it. We need more, it's like kind of... Not we need more lotion? Okay. I don't know. It feels oh. soft. Does it feel it soft? Feels Does it come soft, together? But it's no, not, not together. Unless we all smush it into a bowl. It's mm. not exactly coming together yet. You need more lotion, you think, Rach? Can I mix it with my hands? Sure. This is where your hands might get a little messy, but that's totally okay. And then we can put it in half, and you guys can put it on your placemats and, and kind of mix it on there. It's crumbly, like really crumbly. Yeah, it's it's coming together then. If it's kind of crumbly, it's starting to stick Ew, together. Just, I don't want to touch it with my hands. <laughs> I don't like getting as messy as sister, huh? My hands are up. Feel like Rachel likes diving in. I need more lotion. Oh, I think Benjamin does too. Mine's coming together. Look, Mama. Kind nice. Of Look, Benjamin. You have to like push it together like this. Knead it. Knead it. Knead it. I'm just going back and knead it. Looks knead like it. you're building a snowman. So kneading it really, really well. The more you mix it, the better it comes together. If it's too sticky, you may want to add a little more cornstarch, or if it's too crumbly, you may need to add a little more lotion. And you should end up with a finished product like this. A little. How does it feel? Is it smooth? Mm -hmm. Is it sticky or is it? It's mine's really sticky. Mine's not sticky. sticky at all. After your putty comes together, you can also add some food coloring. Now this is where it gets a little messy, so you may want to put on some gloves or put it in a Ziploc for easier mixing. Then, once it's all mixed together, you'll end up with some beautiful putties just like this. Okay guys, are you ready to add some of your food coloring? Yeah! yeah. To color it? Let's take the gloves and put them on your hands. Because this is the part where it gets real messy. Do about two or three drops. Okay, and now add two or three drops of the red. And then start mixing, and then if we need to add more, we can. If you want to break it so you can stretch it and see if you can get that color in there, Benjamin. Yeah. Look at mine, it's swirling. Nice. Look at my purple. Can I do my purple in? I, for the first okay. part, I need my gloves on. Okay. One, two, little drop. Three. Now, can I have red? You certainly may. Look I at like it, one. Benjamin. Can I it's make nice. this one now? Silas. Come see what we made! You can play too! Feel it! We've been making putty. <laughs> what does it feel like? Does it feel soft? In case we mix that some. Yeah. I see some green coming it in. It is hard. Side. Well, what if you did all the colors that you want? Ooh, all of the colors. It would make brown. Yeah, I probably would make brown. Okay, Silas, let's see if you can put your handprint in it. Can you smash it down? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Want to make this activity a little more fun and interesting? Simply add smells to your putty. You can add scented lotion, essential oils, or flavored extracts. It's a lot of fun. You can ask your kids fun smells like garlic and see what their reaction is, or add something refreshing like a lemon. It makes this activity not only a fun hands-on activity, but it also stimulates your other senses like smell. We are going to have a smell test. I have different smells on the putty, and you're gonna tell me what you think it smells like. Are you ready? Mint. Okay. That's mint. That's mint? That's mint. That's I mint? Know what that you wanna smell this one again? Mm -hmm. Lemon? Yeah? 
It smells like lemon. Yeah? I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like that smell? I don't know what it smells like. You don't know what that is? <laughs> Do you smell it? Potatoes. <laughs> it looks like a potato. It smells like mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes? Do you know what that smell is in it? Garlic? Yeah, good job! <laughs> Good job. Yeah, because we do put garlic in our mashed potatoes, don't we? Mm -hmm. You did good. I'm going to see how the boys do. Benjamin, it's your turn. Come in here, buddy. Here's the first one. <laughs> what does it smell like? Vinegar. Okay. <laughs> Mint. Oh, yeah? I don't know. You don't know? Baking soda. Baking soda? <laughs> what does that smell like? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> you don't know. Do you like that smell? No. All right. You did good. <laughs> All right. What do you think this smells like? A good smell. <laughs> I don't even know. What do you think that smells like? I like the smell of this one. I don't know. Don't know? Hmm. Yeah. What does that smell like? I don't know. You don't know what it smells like? Is it strong? Yeah? <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good guess. Mint? <laughs> this is the third one. What do you think that is? I don't know. Don't know? Is it strong? Do you like the smell? No, Rachel didn't like this one either. Ready? Last one. <laughs> is it a good smell or a bad smell? Good smell. You like that smell, huh? Are you guys ready for the big reveal? Yeah. Come on in here. And I will tell you what all of them were. Do you remember the first one? Lemon. I knew it was the a lemon. The first one was a lemon. This. Smell it now that you know it's Ooh. lemon. See, it does not smell like a lemon. It does smell, smell like a lemon. lemon. All right, the next okay. one that we did was... I knew it was a mint. I said that too. Peppermint. We all it said mint. Did you like it? I said yeah, I like mint. But you I did say mint. Like I did not like you it. You did not like mint? Oh, I like I mint. Kind of you know what's so mint. interesting to me? What? None of you really liked this smell, but Rachel, you usually like... What is this? Oh, Do you guys know what it is? Cinnamon. <laughs> yep, cinnamon. I hate this. You don't like it? I don't did like you guess all. cinnamon? She did not. You guys guessed baking. I think you guessed baking soda, <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> Are you ready for the last I was, smell? I didn't even oh, guess this Now, one. Benjamin did not like this smell at all. Did but I like Silas it? really liked this smell. I said potato. And you said it smelled like a potato. Do you know what, what this is? Onion? Like, it does kind of look like an onion. This is garlic. Oh, I said garlic, remember? That's right, because we put garlic in our potatoes. This is this a smell you would like to make your putty smell like? No. No? You just want mama to stick to cooking with it? I would do lemon. Yeah. <laughs> Good job on your smelling, guys. I hate Everyone that. give me five. All right. We hope you and your family had a lot of fun making this activity today. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Thanks so much for watching. Hi, I'm Jane, and I love crafting with my kids, Alex and Emily because it helps them learn a lot about themselves and how to get along with others. These are important skills for success in school. I like doing crafts because you can turn trash into pretty things. And I love glitter. So in this video, we're going to show you a fun craft that turns empty water bottles and toilet paper tubes into musical shakers. With glitter. <laughs> yes, Alex, plenty of glitter. <laughs> for each shaker, you need an empty and dry water bottle, the short eight ounce kind works best, a toilet paper tube or paper towel tube cut in half, scissors, electrical tape, a funnel, and something to fill the bottle with. We're using beans to make noise and glitter to make it pretty, but you can use whatever you want. Little jingle bells, paper clips, rice, beads, and confetti, anything that'll fit. All right, let's get started. The first step is to fill your bottles a third of the way with beans and glitter or whatever you're using. I've learned early on that it's best to keep glitter in a contained region. It can get pretty messy. 
put that lid on good and tight. We cut the tube next, right? That's right. Do you want to go first? Sure. Emily can do her own cutting, but usually I handle it for Alexandra, especially when it comes to thicker material like cardboard. All done. Now, can you put this over the mouth of the bottle? Step five, tape the tube to the bottle. Make sure to tape the tube very securely to the bottle. I know the next step. What is it? Decorating with tape. That's right. Yeah, and I want to use silver, blue, and white. Oh my goodness, okay, let's do it. Why don't we start with silver first? Okay. Great. How about I will cut the pieces of tape for you, and then you can tape them on the tube. Okay. Emily, are you done with the white tape yet? Can I use it? Sure. One thing I love about crafting is that it's a great way to teach your kids how to take turns and work together. Look, Mom, I made a heart. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. I made one for you too, Alex. Thank you so much. So are you guys all done? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to try them out? Sure. sure. Let's do it. And there you have it. These shakers are pretty to look at and fun to play with. And when your kids use them as instruments, they learn about rhythm and patterns. Try this craft at home and let us know how it goes with a photo or video tagged Mother Goose Club or leave comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for other crafts, tips, activities, and more. Bye! Let's do it again. <laughs> From there? Okay. Okay. <laughs>
Well, mine needs to be longer. Yours needs to be longer too. Do you think your rocket would fly if it didn't have these? Nope, no. Not very well, would it? If you want it to stay in place a little bit better, use some hot glue and glue down the edge of your fin on each side. Then slide it back into the pool noodle. And that'll just give it a little bit more longevity. All right, Benjamin, we're gonna add some hot glue just so they stay attached to your pool no noodle a little better. So when you fly it, yeah. When your kids create detailed crafts like this, they are learning so much. For instance, they are learning to follow directions in order. So how do you glue it? Just, just on the edges of the part that's gonna go into your pool noodle. On each do, uh -huh, side? Just do one line, uh-huh, one line down, and then one on the other side. They are also learning how to strengthen their fine motor skills. This is so important as they go on to build other things in life or they learn to create using their hands. Just be careful with that hot glue gun. All right, now take your pool noodle and slide one of those into there. And you might have to wiggle it a little, a little bit since it has glue on it. To create the power in your rocket, you're gonna need a bamboo skewer. And I told my kids to take their two fingers because that's about an inch and go down about that length on their pool noodle. And you're gonna take the bamboo skewer, go all the way through the pool noodle, and tell them to rotate it a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger. Okay guys, now that your fins are in place, we are going to create the energy, the power behind your rocket. These so we, so cool. they are so cool. I need everybody to grab a skewer, grab one of these bamboo <laughs> skewers, and go down about an inch on your pool noodle. And that's where you're gonna put a hole all the way through, straight through your pool noodle. Even like through that. the other side? Yep, through the other side. It's and kind of wiggle it around, make the hole just a little bit bigger for you to make it easier to put the rubber band through. And then you can bring it back out. And then, parents, this is where your kids might need some help. You're gonna take a rubber band, and on the not pointy side of your bamboo skewer, you're gonna attach the rubber band, and the goal is for you to slide this through the pool noodle all the way to the other side. It's a little tough to get that rubber band to stay on the skewer, but once you do, you can slide that skewer out like that, and you should have something like that. Okay, now you. Okay, now take a rubber band and kind of thread it onto your skewer like that this and you don't have to go far down yep just a little bit down so you can hold it tightly it won't stay on yeah that's why the closer you hold to the tip the better there you go like that this is simply to thread it through your rocket i have to say i was very impressed by this craft it was a lot of fun to make it was probably a very detailed craft so if you have younger children i would definitely recommend that you be there helping them all along the way once you have that on there you're gonna take it you watching you're gonna slide it through the hole. the hole to the other side. And you're gonna wanna try to keep it onto it won't your skewer. Up. When I poke through, it falls off. Okay, I'll help you. When you finally do get it through, you can just pull the skewer out and then your rubber band's through it. Then you're gonna take another rubber band and holding this the first rubber band to make sure that it doesn't slide back out you're gonna take your finger and pull the middle of the rubber band. All right, let me show you how to do it. And then if you need help, I will help you because this is a little bit tricky. You don't want this to fall through, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this with one hand. Then I'm gonna pull this out from the middle and I'm gonna get my rubber band underneath there. Next, you're going to take your second rubber band, slide it underneath, and then put it on like a luggage tag, like so. And you guys, you've seen luggage tags. Remember how the luggage tags went on? You're going to take your rubber band. Did you get it? I guess. You're going to pull it through like a luggage tag so it stays on. Once that's in place, you're almost done. You're gonna take the first 
rubber band and go around both sides of the pool noodle. And once that's firmly in place, you're almost ready to fly your rocket. Now, now take th that and go, through and go through it. Yep, you did it. Good job. This craft gives you a great chance to talk to your kids about big science ideas. For instance, when they make their pool noodles and connect the rubber band, you can stretch that rubber band out and ask them, is that potential energy or actually energy in motion? And then once they let it go, it changes to kinetic energy. I'm gonna wrap one side around it's and wrap the other side around. We took some tape and you're gonna wanna cover the outside of that rubber band, just so it stays in place. You might wanna go around a couple times. You can help your child do this. My kids had fun doing the tape. I'll be doing it uh, double tape. Yeah, that's fine, you can do two. And then once the tape is in place, your power is ready and you're ready to fly. Eight, three, two, one. I loved getting to see my kids actually fly the rocket flingers. Three, two, one. Woohoo! Good job, go get it. Thanks. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you and your family had a lot of fun making the pool noodle rocket flingers. Tips, tricks, comments, we'd love to hear them. Share them below. Thanks for watching. Let's count them. Two, three, four. Now let's color our sticks, okay? Hey, I'm Rachel Hockett and I play the teddy bear on the Mother Goose Club. In real life, I'm a mom to two kids, Olivia and Briley. We love doing holiday crafts like this twinkling star. It's a super easy craft that's fun and educational for kids. In this video, I'd love to show you how to make one. <laughs> okay, for this craft, you will need craft sticks. You'll need some glue, you'll need some markers, some string if you wanna hang it up, and you'll need some decorations. Now your decorations can be anything that'll glue nicely to the sticks. We've got some big sequins here we're gonna use for ours and you can get all of your craft supplies at your local craft store or online. Now, be careful if you're using sequins or small decorations if you have young children, because my son tries to eat them, so watch out for that. Crafting is really fantastic for kids because when they're doing crafts, they're working their finger muscles, and those finger muscles prepare their little fingers to hold a pencil and write, which is a very important skill for when they go to school. Okay, we're ready to craft. Now, the first step is to pick your shape. You can glue four sticks together to make a starburst star, or you can glue five sticks together to make a five point star, or you can glue six sticks together to make a Star of David. I'm gonna make a starburst, so I'll take four. Next, I'm gonna color my sticks yellow, my favorite color. Now, younger kids might get tired after coloring for a few minutes, and that's totally okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. That is the charm of kids' artwork. You can help your child finish their craft if they ask you, or you can just let it be. Next, glue the craft sticks in the shape that you want. You can do this step for your kids if they're too little. Then, set it aside to dry for a good 10 minutes. Now, it's time to decorate. For younger kids, you may need to do the craft for them up to this point, so all they have to do is glue on a few decorations. Just squeeze drops of glue, and add the decorations. Steps like this help to build your child's fine motor skills. Those are the muscle movements that help little fingers pinch, pull, poke, and sort. All done. Now let the decorations get good and dry. And here's a quick tip. While you're waiting for your glue to dry, you can boost your child's learning by asking questions and talking about the craft. Every bit of conversation you have with your child will help your child learn new words and practice talking. Some good crafty questions are, what color is this? Or what shape is that? Or how does the glue feel? And also, how many sequins are on that stick? 
Finally, if you want to hang your star, just glue a loop of string to the back. Now, take a look at how this craft went for me and my kids. Let's pick out four sticks, okay? So we're gonna make a star bus. One, two, two three, four. four! Good job! Now let's color our sticks, okay? A, B, C. What color do you want to color yours, Bradley? I said the K in the middle. You want to color this? Good job! That's wonderful, and I love the color you're choosing. Mommy, look. Oh, that's so beautiful! It kind of looks like the colors that are on an American flag. See? Red and blue. A star! Very good! Before you glue the sequin, baby, we're going to actually glue the sticks together. There you go. And then wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. One more drop of glue. Thank you. Good job. Thank you for sharing. That's perfect, Olivia. I love it. Can you find me a star shape sequin? Give me, give mommy a star. Oh my goodness! This is so good. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to put all of it, like... Like all, all the way across? Okay. okay. Like all the way across from here. So there, so okay. there, so there, so there. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Uh, yay! My kids loved doing that craft, and I love knowing that they got a chance to work with their fingers, that they used their fine motor skills, and that we had a chance to talk. So, give our Twinkling Star craft a try and show me how it goes. <laughs> Let's take a look at some photos and videos from families who tried this craft. turned out so great. Thank you to all our families who sent in photos and videos. You can send yours on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Want more starry action? Watch our other Twinkle videos and hit us up with questions or anything in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about our next video. All right, craft stars, start decorating and we'll see you soon. You may need to do the craft up to this. Next, you glue the sticks together. That's wonderful, and I love the color you're choosing. Ah! You can choose. It's a popsicle stick. No, we don't have any popsicles. It's a stick. It's the popsicle stick. Okay. <laughs> stick. Those are the finger movements that help children learn to pull. Hey, 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 Riley. But is this blue? No. Yes, it is. Hair, poke their brother. Wait, Riley, are you uh, eating the sequins? Super. Riley, give it to mommy. Give it to mommy. Thank you. Okay. All right, now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ivy. I play Baba Sheep on the Mother Goose Club. I love doing arts and crafts, especially with the kids I babysit for, like Lucas. Hi. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a bus out of a cardboard box. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna turn this cardboard box into a bus that we can ride in. Then we can pretend to drive all around the neighborhood, picking up all our friends. 
This is a super creative craft that you can do at home with your child. And by the end of it, you'll have a toy that your child can use for pretend play. This encourages creativity and imagination. For this craft, you'll need a large empty cardboard box, some white, yellow, and black construction paper, glue, adult scissors, safety scissors, crayons, and four paper plates for the wheels. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. First, we're gonna cut off the bottom flaps. The cardboard's a bit tough to cut, so an adult needs to do this step. Now we're going to fold in the top flaps to make the bus sturdy. To make the windows, we're going to use white paper. We're going to cut ours in half so that it fits better on the box. When you're doing this project at home, make sure that you're letting your child make all kinds of creative decisions. The more they do themselves, the more pride they'll feel when they're done. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Sounds good. Can I help with the cutting? Sure. Here's your scissors. If you feel comfortable letting your child use safety scissors, let them help with the cutting. It exercises the small muscles in their hands and develops fine motor skills. I did it! Awesome! Now let's glue these windows on. You almost done? Uh, just my last edge. We're gonna add two pieces of paper to the front to create the windshield. And great! Okay, are you ready to glue on the windows? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna glue on the first one, right here. Look good? Uh-huh. You ready to put it in the middle? Uh-huh. Let's put it right here. Great. Now let's give this bus some headlights. We can fold the piece of paper in half, and I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'm gonna cut it out. If your child's like Lucas and loves to help, you can have him trace the circles himself. Awesome. Wow, look at that circle. This helps them develop their hand-eye coordination. Almost done. Now let's glue the headlights on. Looks good. Awesome. To make the wipers, we're going to cut two long strips of black paper, like this. Awesome! Hey, which way do the windshield wipers go? That way. Good. Looking good. Awesome. Hey, we did it! This bus looks amazing, Lucas! Great job! But it's missing one thing. What? Well, what helps the bus move? The wheel! That's right! We're going to make them out of paper plates. We can either glue them on as is or color them however we want. Let's turn pink. That's a good choice. Now that we've glued these awesome wheels, you ready to put them on the bus? Uh-huh. Let's do it. I'll let you glue yours on first. Oh, that looks great. I'll pop mine on. And make sure it sticks. Looks good. Hey, let's take our bus for a spin. Yeah! Come on! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town.
Try making a bus at home with your child and let us know how it goes by posting photos or videos and hashtagging them with Mother Goose Club. As always, we love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Can I help? <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault because I was like. I went. Oh, okay, stabbing. He knew I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> it exercises their fine motors. Oh, sorry. It exercises the small motors. Small muscles. It exercises their fine. It, ex it okay. Yeah. The different things. Be nice. <laughs> and develops the fine. Now let's glue these headshot. Oh my. Black streak. Street black. I want to wipe your windows. You want to wipe your windows. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Today we're building towers. Building with blocks is not only fun, but it helps your child develop many early childhood skills. It helps them learn things like counting and also to define attributes like color, shape, and size. Colorful blocks, Duplo, Lego, dry erase markers, dice, giant dice. In this activity, your child will be building with blocks. You can ask them to separate by color, shape, size. The sky is the limit. All right, guys, come on in here. Whoa. See all the fun stuff on the table? Everybody yeah. have a seat? Yeah. You know what we're gonna do today? Mm -hmm. We what? are gonna build some towers. We are gonna make patterns out of blocks and do so many right. fun things. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so everybody, choose what you wanna build with first. Can you come up with a color pattern with the Legos, kinda like these blocks? I did a pattern. Nice, Rach. Pink. Yeah, I like your stacking. Stop. You have an idea? Stop. No, look. Okay, I'll try not to look. Let's see how high we can build look here. That. Can I look at it? What colors did you use? Boy, this looks kind of Christmassy. I like it. Benjamin, what are you building? I'm building with something else. Nice. Yeah. How many did you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven blocks? I'm gonna do more. How Look high do you think we can build it? Nice, Rach. Seventeen. Look at my tower. Great, Rachel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. I think it's gonna happen. Ah. Ah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh! That's <laughs> why I need dices. <laughs> In our first activity, it was so much fun just to ask my kids to free build, to use whatever they wanted to, and to come up with different ways to stack them. Are you gonna try to go even higher than you did before? Five, six, seven, eight. Sister, can he help you? He wants to help. Okay. Benjamin, what are you working on? I have no clue. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, do you have yeah. any more to add? What, what happened? So we have 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's 17. 17. <gasps> eight. Oh, we have 18. Like a few more. 19. Oh it's gonna my goodness. 19. The it's fine. It's okay. so good. It's gonna break! Do it more! More! <laughs> 21! Rachel, 22. you're in a precarious predicament. <laughs> it's breaking. 24. Oh. 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 Let's Break try again. It. In our second activity, we played a game, which was a lot of fun for the kids. We took a dice and we rolled it and we stacked the number of blocks according to what number was rolled. That helps develop cardinality. This is also a great way for you as a parent to teach your children that it's not all about winning. Playing the game is just as much fun too. You like games? Yeah! I do too. Okay, this is a really fun game. So I need everybody to choose one dice out of that bin right there. Look at your blocks and you can put them in one through 10 order and see what you're missing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a race to the top, okay? The race to get to the number 10. So you're gonna take your dice and you're gonna roll it. Oh, see, I started with a one. So I would put one block out in front. Then you roll again 
and I would add how many more blocks? How many dots do you see on there, Silas? Three, so I would add three blocks. So I'd go one, two, and three. Whoever gets to 10 first wins. I got a one. You get to stack five blocks. Five. All right, now roll your dice again and see what number you get. So add how many blocks? Good. Oh man. Mama, I Did Rachel win? Yeah, I, I got five. I won. Three, three. I won. I won. Rachel no won. I won. No. She raced to ten. I won. No. All right, you want to do it again? Do it yep. Now Silas had a little bit of trouble with this game because he wasn't winning. We all know that it's hard to lose sometimes, but this is a great way for you as a parent to teach them that it's not always about winning. It's about learning and doing the activity as well. We're all gonna roll at the same time. So first roll, you ready? Go. I got a six. Whoa. Oh man. We all got a six. So you're tied. We're all gonna roll it again. Ready? Go. Go, I won, I won, I won. I won. No, I won. I got first. I did it. Do it again, Silas. Let's see if we get to 10. Rachel's blow. Silas. It's okay that you win. so I won. Hey, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. It's okay, right? In our next activity, I ask my kids to take their blocks and write numbers one through 10 on them. This is a great way for your child to practice writing their numbers. Then to practice subitizing, I had them write dots right next to the number so that when they look at the dots, they know immediately how many there are in that set. Okay guys, I want you to take a pen one. and one of these markers and I want you to write one through 10 on your blocks. Can we start then, from the top one? You can start any place you want. Okay. And okay. then you can put some dots on another side that show how many there are. Okay. One. Yep. So one, one dot. dot, good. One dot. Three, two, two dots. Four dots. Number three. Rachel took it a step further and decided that she wanted to draw tally marks on her blocks. This was a great way to introduce counting by fives to your children. Oh, Rachel, I like your tally marks. You're learning that in school, aren't you? The last thing we did was we built a tall, tall tower. Every child loves doing this. This was a really fun thing for my kids because they got to engage with one another. It helped them talk and reason through things. They had to learn to cooperate as they talked about how they wanted to build their tower. Then they also sorted the blocks by size. Can you build a really high tower? Yeah. Which one do you want to start with at the bottom? Let Silas start first. Wait, you need more I'll stable at the bottom. Please. I think so too. Start That's with a good this idea, sis. At the bottom, Silas. Start with the big one at the bottom. Silas. That's not long enough. See, we need, what I'm trying to tell you is we can use all the square ones and keep going up until we can use these. That's pieces. a good idea. Wait, can you put them put the Oh, yeah, we could do that. That's some good work that. together. Uh, and I'll put another this one. one. This we one. two squares. Two. Oh, okay. Bend them until they sort them. And then here's the last one. Getting them ready to go. And now could you pick two long pieces? Once my children started building their tower, it also helped develop spatial awareness as they had to decide which blocks fit together correctly. Oh, Sass, can we take that one off? Because I think there might be one. Look at Oh, that might not be. Yeah, that is right. It's a big two. We can make a two big piece. Yes! Yeah. There we go. It doesn't have to be even all the way up. Remember buildings, they can be different sizes. So you can keep going, it doesn't, there you go. Woo, Silas, it's taller than you now. You know how skyscrapers, they have different points? Now that works great. Wow. Our building fell down. At the very end, what child doesn't like to knock over their tower? Silas got right on in there and knocked their tall tower over. I was like, 10 more, and then it oh. Building towers is fantastic open play for your kids. It helps them develop creativity and also solidify those early math skills. It helps them learn things like fine motor skills, and if they're playing with siblings, they have to learn to cooperate and take turns. Who knew that building towers would be so much fun and also educational? Hi, I'm Jane, and these are my kids, Alex and Emily. Hi! These guys love to play pretend, which is fantastic because they're using their imaginations and practicing social skills. 
Sometimes, we like to create simple props like these bunny ears. Props are a great way to spark the imagination. Today we'll show you how to make these bunny ears out of paper plates and cotton balls. <laughs> okay, for this craft, you'll need heavy paper plates that are white on at least one side, crayons, cotton balls, a pencil, safety scissors, and glue. The first step is to fold your plate in half like this. Next, draw the ear shape with a pencil like this. Now cut around the outline you just drew. If your kids can handle child safe scissors, it's a good idea to let them try cutting. Cutting with scissors develops finger muscles, which kids need when they learn to write. If you're not comfortable with your kids using scissors, you can just do the cutting for them, or use a pre-cut plate so they can just assemble. Now open the plate and color the inside of the bunny ears any color you want. I'm doing pink. Now for my favorite part, adding cotton balls to make the ears fluffy. You can glue the cotton balls on as is, like this. Or stretch out the cotton balls and stick them on with little dabs of glue like this. Looking great, guys. Now let's let our bunny hats dry. You can adapt this craft to make bear ears, frog eyes, antlers, or anything else your kids can imagine. If you want to extend this craft, you can paint the hat different colors or add extras like feathers and glitter. Hop, 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 hop. Well, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Let's pretend that I'm the mommy bunny and you're the baby bunny. Okay. Hop, 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 hop. The best part of doing this craft is getting to play bunnies when you're done. Try making the bunny hat at home with your kids. And if you're the sharing type, please send me photos and videos. For more bunny fun, you and your kids can sing along with our bunny hop. You can find the video on YouTube. Hit us up with questions or comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about our next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. we're going to show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn, and these are my friends Phoebe and Kira. When I was a kid, I spent hours making shapes and creatures and pretend foods out of Play-Doh. I loved the endless possibilities of a lump of fresh, squishy dough. <laughs> what I didn't realize was that those little mounds of dough were helping me develop my hand muscles and sparking my imagination. So now I love watching these guys have that same creative experience and knowing the great benefits they're getting while they play. In this video, we're going to show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. This is a great project to do with kids because not only will they learn by helping you with the cooking, but they also have fun playing with the finished product. The best place for this project is the kitchen because we'll need to cook our dough on the stove for several minutes. And plus, we might make a little mess. The tools that we'll need are a small saucepan, a wooden spoon, a plate, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. The ingredients that we'll need are flour, water, 
salt, vegetable oil, cream of tartar, and food coloring. And we'll also need some glitter because we're making our dough sparkly. Phoebe and Kira helped me with the measuring, which is a great thing for them to learn. Okay, are you guys ready to add the ingredients? Yeah! Okay, first, one cup of flour. Phoebe? It's hard to come out. There you go. Good job. All right, second, we're gonna add one cup of water, and I'll do that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, third, a quarter cup of salt. All right, Kira, good job. Now, we'll add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'll do that. It's very tiny. It is very tiny. One tablespoon. Here we go. Then, we add two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Do you each want to add one teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. And with your finger, you want to level that off? Yeah, good job. Now right into the pan. Good job. So Kira, do you see what Phoebe did? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then level it off. Good job. Nice, okay. Now it's time to add the food coloring. What color should we make our Play-Doh? Blue. Blue, sounds good. So let's add 10 drops of blue food coloring to the pan. I can add five and Kira can add five since five plus five is 10. Perfect, all right, let's count together. One, One two, three, four, Five. Five. Good job. Okay. Now, Phoebe, your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you guys wanna try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream, what do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. 
then just knead it until it's spread throughout. See, wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna stick it. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Bye! Bye. And... Bye! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh. Cute. Hey. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs> Mother Goose Club Playhouse.